Our second scripture reading is Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Wally is one of those movies that isn't completely um, well known, um, but in the circles of those who know it, there is fierce loyalty, <laughs> and for a very good reason. This is a delightful movie, and it begins with a pre present premise that um, we have destroyed Earth, um, that there is so much pollution and so much trash, Earth is no longer inhabitable. Um, and so we've got to go out on a five-year cruise in the space. Are you ready for it, Virginia? All right. Okay, excellent. Virginia's on. But then, um, and then there are robots, Wally, -E, um, who are going to clean it up for us while we're away and make it inhabitable again. But that five year goes to 10 years, goes to 20 years, goes to 100 years, 700 years later, um, there's still a space cruise going on. Maybe not the worst thing for some of us, um, but things get a little weird. Cupcake in a cup, um, you can't walk anymore, you're in a hover chair, things like that. Barry? How can you not love Wally? -E? <laughs> He's fantastic and adorable and amazing. And Kara was right about Eva and the trigger happy arm. Um, poor Wally. -E. Um, but his persistence pays off. And, and there's a beautiful reunion and friendship at the end. Uh, but we come 
to this piece and there's so many beautiful things about it but right but starting with curiosity and starting with caring and caring even for cockroaches and giving them your twinkie so that they have something to eat and a place to live at the same time which is what wally did i mean right wow you can not want anything better than that um, but because Wally is curious and because Wally cares, there's this ripple effect that starts to happen from just one, um, I would say, person, but he's a machine. And, and what's important about that is that that's what starts a chain of possibility in terms of bringing life back to all of Earth. And it's very ecological, and, and uh, these are times that I rely on Toby, who had sent me an email about the mustard seed, but has this awesome go through of how all of this happens, right? Like we just start with what we can do. And then there's this successional growth of ripples that come. So we've got land that's disturbed. Um, we've got all bunch of trash, um, but we've got 700 years of leaving it to its own devices and new environments that are created. So we've got a meadow that usually comes first where grasses and roots break down the hard pan and pervious materials and replace natural vegetation. Somehow we have no idea, but it's a miracle. And that's what Wally finds. He doesn't know what he finds, but Eva knows what he finds in that, in the, in the grass and in the boot that's existing. And then grasses give way to meadow flowers and perennials that bring out the butterflies and the meadow larks and the bumblebees. And then meadows change the soil microenvironment so shrubs can come in and new life adapts to changes and conditions for whole new set of plants and creatures and then shrubs are slowly replaced by small trees which then in turn lead to the development of climax forests and then we got the forests that are typically when humans don't in intervene self-regulated by forest fires and other natural events that keep the cycle then back to the beginning so how do we keep this rhythm going and how do we celebrate that rhythm of creation and give it room to happen and, and to, to survive? And that brings us to the Isaiah passage and this question that's before us, why do you eat that which is not bread? And why do you labor for that which does not satisfy? And this movie does a great job at showing what that possibility could look like in terms of you can have anything you want, but it has to be in a cup. And if you would ask Ross about what it's like to be on a liquid diet for a while, he will tell you how much it does not satisfy and is not okay. And, and so why do we eat that which is not bread, right? Like the captain finds a picture of pizza. He didn't know what pizza was anymore. He finds a picture when he's asking the computer all these questions about Earth, and then all of a sudden he's ready to go back home, right? Anybody will want pizza. But also why do we labor for that which does not satisfy? So we've got... Um, clips in the movie about the people talking to each other. Oh, we did this virtual thing. We did this virtual thing. They're all on screens. They're going down the hovercraft right side by side, talking to the screen um, instead of each other. And Wally begins to change that by trying to get their attention um, and succeeds for just a couple people who then all of a sudden discover they have a pool and are splashing and playing and there's all this more out there that they didn't know about. And so we begin to discover the more because of Wally's curiosity and caring. And this comes and builds to a point where the captain makes an important decision.
And then there's the big fight that ensues, but they win. <laughs> um, and they win because of the um, connections that Wally has made and because of the people who are able to help get the plant back um, to where it needs to be and get the axiom back. And the best part of the movie is watching the credits um, because for the whole movie, you've seen these rob robots be busy, 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 always working, always doing things. People are always going around. And now all of a sudden you see the same busyness, but they're planting and they're growing and there's labor that's bringing transformation. Um, there's a partnership that's happening that's meaningful. Um, I was reading uh, a book um, about, uh, from a pastor this past week who talked about laziness and sloth, not as not doing anything, but remaining busy with the things that will help us, that will keep us from doing what we need to be doing. That, that it's not that it's about doing nothing, it's about doing the things that aren't needed that fill up our time in a way that we don't have to do what we really ought to be doing. And so how do we work our busyness how do we work our commitment and perseverance in a way that it is building and it is growing and it is a partnership that's bringing forth life, that it is we are laboring for that which does satisfy, that we are setting a feast of abundance and inviting everyone to it, that the word that God sends out through us doesn't return empty, but just as the waters and the snows come and water the earth, and bring forth life, so does the word that God has sent out through us water and bring forth life for those around us. So how do we do partners? Yes, there is work. Yes, there is risk. And yes, there are times when it will not be easy at all. But is it worth it to live and not just survive? And that's the promise of abundance, that Wally offers everyone on the axiom and that the captain grabs and takes and there's this awesome moment of all of the music behind him standing up for the first time off of his hoverboard and turning um, autopilot off and taking back control. Now, all of us here have been able to stand up in one way or another and come, but what is the small step that's before us? What is the step that we might be embarrassed is the step that we need to take, but is the really big moment for us? And how can we take that and celebrate it and then put it into that succession growth that it can bring about other growth and other life and other opportunities? May we not give up. May we keep going, but also may we try something new so that we don't just keep going and just being busy for that which does not satisfy, but that we can be busy where we are needed to be busy, where we can labor where we are needed to labor, where we can eat and celebrate rich food and delight ourselves in what we have been able to create together. That's our discipleship commitment for the week coming up. You might be in a place where you need to just keep going and to not give up like Wally attached to that spaceship. And hopefully you'll have a beautiful star moment in the midst of all of the crazy. Um, and also, if you're in a place where it's time to try something new, where it's time to be busy in, in what you need to be busy in, then may this be a week to start that step and that shift. And then let's see what God can grow from it. And again, we'll be meeting after service in the fellowship hall in the conference room to talk some of those little things. And if you've got ideas of where we need to just keep going or got ideas of something that you've been thinking about that might be a new thing that we need to try, bring them. All right? Amen. <laughs>